Hey, Mike, how you doing, buddy? Hey, what's up, Corey? May I take a look at your sword? Mm, there you go. Oh, beauty. Oh, it looks awesome, man. Sweet. Samurais are pretty badass. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> All right. I'm baffled, man. I couldn't tell you what I bought. It's a samurai sword. Shut up, chum. I am a Japanese sword appraiser and dealer. The guys call me up whenever they get something new or interesting, and I help them determine what its current value is. After World War II, it's estimated about 3 million Japanese swords came out of Japan that were confiscated by the occupation forces. Most likely, this is something like that. Okay. Samurais are pretty badass. Well, samurai were very honorable, very determined warriors. So even if you and I were fighting and I admit defeat, I would even ask you honorably to cut off my head and assist me. They wanted to basically show that, okay, I'm a man, this is it, it's my time, and can you help me? Not the way I'd play it, but okay. <laughs> Rick, you don't look very happy. Yeah, apparently I don't need you anymore because Chum knows everything there is to know about swords now. Uh, I told you to call me if you ever needed some help. So can you tell me about these things? Or, or should I ask you? Yeah, check them out. So generally, when you're looking at swords to buy, you always want to check the tang to see if it's signed, to see if anybody famous made the sword. This sword is signed Soshuju Akihiro. He's one of the most famous makers of Japanese sword history. You know, people spend years and years and years looking for the holy grail of Japanese swords, worth up to three or four million dollars. I like where this is going, Rick. Unfortunately, the signature appears to be a forgery. Well, let me take a look at the handle with your permission. Absolutely. That was slick. So this blade is actually very interesting because during the 1800s, there was a great rebellion and a civil war going on, and many factions were trying to take over Japan. This blade was made in 1863 by Nagahiro and was given to the Lord of Choshu to protect Japan against enemies of the emperor, the imperial family, and especially against the Tokugawa or the military leader. So this is quite an important sword, historically. May I take a look at your sword? Oh, absolutely, right ahead. You know, swords like this, they're laminated and yes. they're made with like about 33,000 layers of oh, steel. Yes, sir. So, their cutting ability is unparalleled. During World War II, there was footage of one that cut through a machine gun barrel. Wow. This was very prominent around 1002, around the late 1200s. And swords in that time period are well worth anywhere from 50,000 up to $4 million. It is really rare to find a sword from the 1200s in fully intact condition. Getting a sword like that is kind of like winning the lotto. So tell me, is it real? We have to remove the handle to take a look at the signature. So what this says is actually Shinjo. He's a very famous maker, Iwama Shinjo. But there is no such maker as Ishida Koeda, unfortunately. And swords from the Kamakura period were worn opposite. So the signature would actually be on this side of the tank. OK. What we have here is actually a reproduction of a Kamakura period sword. Wow. Over two years ago, I sent a samurai sword to Japan to get fully restored. Finally, it's back in the States, and Mike brought it to the shop today. I can't wait to see this. Here it is. There we go. Ooh-wee, that thing looks sweet. Oh, that's nice. The blade itself was made right around 1500, right? You know, before it was polished, it gets a little hard to tell, but after it's polished, we can see the detail more clearly. Okay. Early 1600s is where we agreed after the polish. Okay. We changed the casing to a new one here, and we did a special handle wrap in the old traditional way, and we did early 1600 fittings. But now, since it's all polished and everything, you're gonna have to have somebody take care of it. Okay. They used to do this in samurai movies after battle. This is called Uchiko. This is the final powdered form of polishing stone. A little dab, dab, dab. Basically what it does is it takes off fingerprints, old oil, dirt, and dust. So what's it worth? I'd say you're looking at the sword's value in around the 35 to 40,000 territory. I think I did all right. 